How do I prepare my operator console for competition? An operator console is everything that you bring to your driver station in order to control your robot during a match. Your operator console should be fine-tuned to how your drivers and drive team like it. You want to make sure that everyone is extremely comfortable with everything that you've brought to the field, knows where everything is, and is able to do anything that might be required with it very quickly. You should be practicing with your operator console, making sure that everyone is super comfortable with everything you bring. Make sure that what you're bringing to the match is easy to transport and easy to lay out. Something like just a flat slab like this driver station or a briefcase, something like that. We want to protect everything that you're bringing with you, but also make it extremely fast to move in and move out of the driver station and uh, take back to your pit. Your driver station must be shorter than five feet long, smaller than one foot to two inches deep, and shorter than six foot six inches tall. Your operator console must not attach to the field in any way other than through the loop tape that is provided on the driver station. You want to make sure that you are using that loop tape by putting hook side tape on the underside of whatever you're bringing to the field. I've seen loads of operator consoles get knocked off the driver station from robots impacting the wall or doing other normal robot things. At a minimum, your operator console must include a computer with a screen and at least one controller or human input device that isn't a keyboard and mouse. There are, however, a whole bunch of other things that you can bring with your operator console that could make your experience in the field much better. The computer you bring to the field must be running the Windows operating system so that it can utilize the software that communicates with the field. It must also be decently fast. You don't want to be waiting for your computer to boot up if for some reason it's shut off. Before you get to the competition, you should install on your operator console the FRC game tools available from NI. You don't want to wait until you get to the competition because you may not have internet access or internet access at a fast enough speed that allow you to install it. Make sure that when you have your driver station software installed, you've also put in the correct team number in the team number input window. Make sure that your Wi-Fi network adapter is off, your Bluetooth network adapter is off, and your firewalls are disabled. All of these things will make sure that you connect to the field quickly and with as few disconnects as possible. You don't want separate antivirus software installed on your computer like Norden or McAfee. Those things can be extremely difficult to disable quickly and may prevent you from playing in a match. Your operator console should have an ethernet port and at least two USB-A ports. One for your driver, one for your operator, whatever controllers you're using. It's okay if your computer doesn't have an ethernet port on it. You wanna make sure that you have a network adapter that connects to an ethernet and to some port on your computer. Even if you do have an ethernet port on your computer, you should also bring a network adapter that can utilize one of the other ports in your computer. This is the most important connection between your operator console and the field. Also make sure that you're bringing your power adapter for your operator console to the field. You do not want to leave it in your pit or in someone's backpack, anywhere else but with the laptop. There is an outlet available to you on the field for you to plug in your laptop or anything else that might be on your operator console. Please use it. We highly recommend that you bring a computer with USB-A ports. Most controllers still have a USB-A interface to computers. So if you're on something like USB-C only, you will most definitely have to bring an adapter uh, depending on what your control interface is. We also recommend that you bring a USB hub. This is just as a backup in case one or more of a USB ports fail. When you think about which controllers to bring to the field with you, make sure that your drivers have had time with those controllers before you get on the field. You wanna make sure they're using the exact same thing at home practicing as they are on the field driving the robot. Here at Anymark, we sell DualShock 4 controllers as well as Logitech F310 controllers. There are loads of different controller types. The two primary options are sort of the more standard game layout, which is Xbox and the PlayStation kind of layout. These two layouts are slightly different. Um, you can't just swap in one controller and replace it with the other. If you have a PlayStation controller and you swap with an Xbox, some of your buttons may have changed. You'll need to change your software to be able to swap between a PS4 and an Xbox controller. They aren't directly compatible. Stuff like the Logitech F310, however, uses the Xbox controller layout and is hot swappable. You can switch between these two without issue. I can't stress this enough, the best option for you is what your drivers are familiar with. Just make sure that if you have a custom controller or a weird controller layout or something like that, that you bring a backup. Um, if it's a custom, another team won't be able to help you by providing you another controller. Also in your operator console, you should have a local copy of your robot software ready to deploy on your laptop. In the event that something goes wrong with your code and you need to redeploy quickly, this is the best option for allowing you to do that on the field. For users of the RoboRio 2, 
you can also bring along a spare SD card. In the event that something goes wrong with your RoboRio or with the SD card in your Rio or something's wrong with the new version of your code, you could just swap the SD card to the stable version of your code and your RoboRio should be back up and running. This isn't available in the RoboRio 1, but for the RoboRio 2, I highly recommend it. I also recommend that you bring a USB-B cable to the field. This is for interfacing through RoboRio and a spare USB-C cable or whatever cable uh, connects to your controllers. These controllers here use USB-C, so we use the same cable for the controllers as we use for, say, plugging into a Spark Max or something like that. I've been doing FRC for a really long time, and I am a first technical advisor that you will see at competitions this year. I've seen just about everything that can go wrong, go wrong. Whether it's a custom solution starting to fail, not work in a match, or a controller gets dropped, or a laptop just blue screens. There are so many things that can go wrong and you wanna limit them as much as you possibly can. I have a long list of recommendations for backups that you should be bringing to the field with you on your operator console, or at least in a backpack or something. Bring it to the field with you. I recommend you bring a spare laptop, spare controllers, spare cables for your controllers, power adapter, a spare power adapter for your laptop, a clean copy of your code that you know is functional, a spare SD card if you have a RoboRio 2 with a clean version of your code and firmware, adapters to convert everything to USB-A just in case, spare cables for anything that you might need to connect to on your robot, the USB-B cable, even the most robust operator console setups will have problems. Something will go wrong that you don't expect. You want to make sure you have a backup of everything and that you can replace virtually anything on your operator console. I cannot stress enough how important it is to get this right. You want to be on the field and connected to your robot the whole time. And while the robot is a big part of staying connected, this is also incredibly important for staying connected to your robot. You can also add things to the Opera console that you don't necessarily need. Something like a monitor. This one is specifically positioned at the height of the drivers so that they can look very quickly from the robot on the field to the monitor and back. AnyMark sells this. Uh, we think it's great. If you also have the AnyMark driver station, it's actually a pretty quick modification to be able to attach this. You can add LED lights to your console. Uh, remember, there's that outlet there, so you can power it either off your laptop or straight from the outlet. Remember, once you've got the basics down, your operator console is one of the two things that everyone's gonna see when you come to a match. So make sure to make it within your team's branding, make it pretty, bling it out, have a good time with it. Your operator console is critical for staying connected over the course of a match. Getting this right can help ensure that your event goes smoothly. And that is how you get your operator console ready for competition.